Why now? Uh, well, because I, as you usually see, as you've seen on CNBC for the past you know, three months, because the markets are incredibly frothy. So if you're going to do it, this is the moment. Uh, it's very, very easy to raise capital if you're a SPAC via an IPO. And then the prices are so high that it's a great thing to sell into. And if you're considering doing an IPO or maybe selling into a SPAC, the SPAC process, even though you've got to pay the sponsor a little bit more, say, than you would pay IPO underwriters, there is less disclosure. It is faster. And again, right now, the, the market is just full of liquidity for these things. It's a lot easier, certainly, to go public via SPAC compared to all the, the paperwork that you got to do if you actually IPO, Leslie. And, and that has, has given SPAC sort of a, an unsavory reputation, at least past SPACs. So I'm wondering if things mm -hmm. have changed this time around. You've hit the nail on the head, Melissa, because you're right. In maybe even five years ago, this was something that, you know, even Goldman Sachs wouldn't underwrite. Um, and now you're seeing really decent brand name people, Bill Foley, Jamath Palahapatia, Barry Sternlicht, uh, Michael Klein, who is a, a banker at Citigroup. Uh, now Bill Ackman is pursuing uh, the SPAC world. And so you're seeing, you know, really credible faces in the finance world uh, seek out SPACs as kind of uh, their next act, uh, their, their uh, you know, new project, if you will. Um, and you also see in the, in the public markets, these things are performing incredibly Incredibly well. Look at what's gone on with Nikola, uh, especially as you've gotten some of this retail interest in these SPACs. It's clear that if you go out and do these things, oftentimes, at least in this market, uh, which is looking a little frothy, as Dan mentioned, you will see some pretty strong aftermarket performance, especially with these brand name, you know, companies like Nikola. I can see where the sponsors do well in these kinds of uh, properties. Do investors do well necessarily, or not necessarily, but do they do well? What's the history tell us? And question number two, with a SPAC, which is also known as a blank check company, do you know going in, or does the SPAC sponsor know going in, what their target company is going to be, who they might merge with, who they might uh, invest in? Or is that uh, something that is TBD? Uh, Tyler, on the first part, it, 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 there's a, kind of some very good examples, things they've done very well, some that have done very poorly. It, it's worth noting, though, what we've seen in terms of SPAC activity this year, we, we've never seen anything like this before. So it's kind of hard to say how this year's will do compared to old ones. For your second question, though, no. Uh, when you buy into a SPAC as an IPO, you don't know what it's going to buy. You might have some broad strokes. For example, they might say, we're going to look at a tech company or an industrial company or a media company. But in terms of what that company is going to be, you know nothing about it. You do, though, as a shareholder, have two rights. You have the right to vote on the deal. You have to The deal has to get approved by shareholders, which is a risk for companies that sell into SPACs. And you also do have redemption rights, uh, which you wouldn't, for example, have if you were investing in a private equity fund. And, and Leslie, Dan had touched on this before in terms of the competition for IPOs. 80 percent of the money raised mm -hmm. for IPOs through April have been raised for SPACs. Um, and I'm wondering, right. you know, there's a couple of ripple effects. You know, are SPACs versus IPOs, how are they in terms of profitability for banks, how much money the banks make off these deals? Uh, and then also in terms of investor appetite, I mean, it must be difficult or more difficult these days to sell an IPO if you got all the competition from SPACs. So with SPACs, there are still underwriters, as you would see with the traditional IPO. Um, there seems to be just kind of anecdotally fewer underwriters that are listed on these things, uh, and they are smaller in size than you may see with, a, with an IPO. For example, if you are raising a SPAC, uh, let's take you know, Bill Ackman SPAC as an example, because that one uh, looks like it's coming down the pike this week. That one will raise at maximum $4 billion. So if you're underwriting $4 billion of shares, you'll get a gross uh, spread on that. Uh, they're looking to purchase a company that could be, you know, tens of billions of dollars. Then they're going to add their own money into that pile in order to acquire that. So that company, if it went public, depending on how much it floated, could actually provide more fees for the underwriters than the SPAC would, uh, but it's not a, a, a large amount of, of differential there. And so I think that the banks are still meaningful participation participants in these SPACs in the way that they may not be for, say, a direct listing, which is another uh, mechanism for people to go public.